There's a topic that always needs clarification. Doesn't matter how often you, you discuss it, doesn't matter how many questions you answer regarding it, it will always come up again and again. And it is the topic of Yama. And this topic of Yama is really a problem merely because of the word, merely because of the name Yama. Yama is used in a number of different situations with uh, religious context and with uh, the names of uh, iconographic forms. Now, where does this problem really arise? Well, probably we can say with the Wheel of Life paintings, where in the hell realms you have a figure that is known as Yama Dharma Raja. And here Dharma Raja means, means the, the king or the lord of the law, not not of capital D Dharma, but small d Dharma, meaning meaning the law of cause and effect. And so then, uh, essentially, he is the judge, or he is the the personification of this abstract concept. He's the personification of uh, uh, of cause and effect to be the judge in hell to be represented as a as a figurative form. So. We have Yama there. Then many people actually consider that the wrathful figure holding the wheel of life is also Yama. But this is actually not always correct. It could be correct in some traditions where they promote that, but then in other traditions and in early Sanskrit texts and Chinese translation, we have the the wrathful deity holding the wheel of life is called the demon of impermanence. Because the wheel of life is actually the wheel of life and death and the wheel of becoming with the 12 links of dependent arising. So it'd be a little odd to have two yamas in the painting, one in the hell realms and one holding the disc. It's just not right. Its impermanence is the wrathful uh, personification uh, that, that is holding the wheel. That's impermanence. Okay, then we have Deva Yama. We have the god Yama. And he is not the Yama that's in the hell realms. He lives in the gods' realms, and he's included as one of the ten gods uh, that is commonly found with mandalas in Vajrayana Buddhism. Mandalas such as the Medicine Buddha Mandala, and many Kriya and Yoga mandalas will have these worldly, um, these borrowings from uh, Hindu worldly gods like Agni, uh, Ishana, Shiva, um, Yama, uh, Buddhavi. There, there's these borrowings of these Indian gods which are uh, uh, imported and placed within uh, tantric Buddhist mandalas. Okay, so that's two now. We have Yama, the judge in hell. Then we have Deva Yama, who's found in mandalas. Then we have uh, Yama Dharma Raja, who's a Dharmapala, who's a, a protector deity, who's uh, uniquely, uh, specifically associated with the Vajrabhairava cycle of Tantras. Then we have uh, Buddha Yama Dharma Raja. So Buddha Yama Dharma Raja looks like uh, a Buddha. He's usually blue in color, sometimes light green, and sometimes a little bit more orangey yellow. There's not a lot of set uh, iconographic um, detail. And also there's different traditions for what's called the, the six munis of the six realms, which are essentially the six Buddhas of the six realms which appears to me more coming from the Nyingma tradition of the Bardo Todal, the, the Tibetan Book of the Dead, uh, part of the peaceful deities. Uh, Mandala are these six sages of the six realms, these six Buddhas, and one of them is called Yama Dharma Raja. So this is really the problem. We, we have the god in the heavens, Yama. We, we have Yama Dharma Raja, who's the judge in hell. We have Yama Dharma Raja, who's a protector deity for Vajra Bhairava cycle of practices. And we have Yama Dharma Raja Buddha, who comes out of the Bardo Todal and is a peaceful deity and a Buddha figure. So this is really the problem. It's just terminology and understanding what we mean when we, when we use the term Yama or Yama Dharma Raja. So don't forget. This is always a problem. Uh, press the like button. You can subscribe. You can ask questions. And you can also join Har on Patreon for longer videos and for unpublished uh, articles and essays and images that are not yet uploaded to the Himalayan Art Resources website.